basically, I just wanted to write a story that I didn't really have growing up. Like I said, I read a lot of African American stories, or and I, I'm a, I'm a very big um, movie and television person, and I'm a '90s kid, so I grew up watching things like Now and Then or My Girl, um, which were was about like white girls growing up. And I basically just wanted to write about Toronto girls growing up, Toronto Black girls growing up, Toronto Jamaican girls growing up. And um, that's kind of just what happened. And so because I was writing about the specific experience, um, and I also really wanted to write an introspective, quiet girl, because a lot of the books that I read were very precocious, loud um, uh, children just in general, but also girls. And I was like, ah, what about the quiet kids who don't really do that? Like Kara has her moments, but she's very quiet and she's very observational. So I just wanted to write something that uh, would have made me feel represented when I was younger. And because of that, culture just kind of became a big part of the, the collection because I was like, you know, Jamaican Canadian girls, specifically in Toronto, we like there's a culture there that I really want to express, uh, particularly this idea of when I was growing up, you didn't want to be Canadian. You wanted to be from the islands. You wanted to be from the countries that your parents or your grandparents were from. And that wasn't really something that I saw in the stories that I was reading. Um, it was it was basically like you're not black enough or you're not white enough. Uh, those were the kind of things that was the kind of liminality that I was seeing in, in the different stories that I was reading. And I was like, yeah, that's not really something that I experienced growing up. It was just like, how authentically Caribbean can you be? And I wanted to put that on the page. So there's going to be a lot of rejections, but that actually really has little to do with your talent. It just has to do with whether or not you're fitting with this particular publication or with this particular publisher or this particular school. Um, so just knowing that, but also giving yourself space to feel sad about it. Because I, you know, when I was like listening to other authors when I was um, in school or when I was younger, there was a lot of this like, yeah, you know, just push forward and be positive and you need to be all of those things too, but you can also give yourself space to feel sad and nobody really talked about that because it's a part of the process. You just, you know, can't stay in it and you have to push past that. I live with them. Um, so they're always on my mind. I can't be uninvested in them. That's the real question. It's when I have to let them go. That's the harder. Um, Part. But like I said, it starts like I might not know who they are at first until I start doing I don't even consider them exercises, but until I get them to start talking to each other. Um, and then when I get them to start talking to each other, their dialogue is in my head constantly, even if I'm doing other things and not consciously thinking of it, it's in the back of my head, it's percolating. So I'm always investing my characters because I'm in my story. Um, and I can't write other things like, so for instance, I have a day job, I work at a nonprofit and my character's names for my next book, River Mama, are Alicia, Mars, and Heaven. And writing an email, I'd have to reread my emails because I might say Alicia instead of the name of the person I'm emailing, because they're just always there with me. Um, so, so yeah, it's not really a question of staying invested. It's walking away from them and walking away from them means just like not looking at my story for a really long time and going for walks and doing other things and um, watching other media to get my own story out of my head.